You know what I really hate? I really hate people telling me what I can and cannot say because someone might get offended by my choice of words and call it hate speech. But what if there is no actual hatred behind the speech? What if there is, for example, merely disapproval of someone else's actions or distaste for someone else's lifestyle choices or disdain for someone else's set of values and priorities or even, God, for help us, a joke? The concept of hate speech grew out of the Marxist grievance industry, where if you are not actually being oppressed by someone, well, maybe you're being offended by someone. Pretty much all the modern grievances and self-loathing and cultural disorientation come from that one deadly concept, being offended by somebody else's words. The old adage, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me is anathema to the modern left. From the moment the modern left decided to weaponize the concept of being offended through all sorts of anti-discrimination legislation, rules and laws, workplace things, such as our own pernicious Section 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act, we have seen an explosion in misery and even mental health problems. Now, I hasten to add, I am neither a psychologist nor a psychiatrist, but it strikes me that many of the current ills of modern society, particularly amongst the young, stem from in an insatiable desire and demand by individuals to have their own particular lifestyle choices, their own sexual peccadilloes or preferences, or their own genetic background respected and validated for its own sake, rather than, as Martin Luther King urged, respecting the individual, not for things they are born with or whatever, but for the content of their character. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Unfortunately, we are not in Martin Luther King's dream world, sadly. We are not in a world governed by character, but rather we are in one governed by self-pity, narcissism, and fear of being offended. You see, purely from a logic point of view, character includes many qualities, but chief among them are self-esteem, dignity in the face of adversity, resilience, and many Christian characteristics, such as the ability to forgive, the ability to show self-restraint when needed, and so on. But those character traits count for nothing when the overriding concern is being offended. As I said, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I am a writer and a linguist. And I know that, for example, valid criticism may and probably will often cause offence. Even when the criticism is justified and even when the intention behind the criticism is to help an individual to either improve themselves or their skills or their job or whatever it might be for their benefit. There's still a 50-50 chance today that criticism will lead to offence being taken. So therefore, if our focus is, is not to offend, well, we never dare criticise. And that's a pretty quick downward spiral if none of us is ever prepared or allowed to criticise another person. If, however, your focus is not on fear of being criticised, but rather on your own individual strength of character, as Martin Luther King would have preferred, then it is less likely by definition that you will feel the need to go running to the sanctity of the law or the HR department or whoever else to insist on having someone fired or having someone cancelled because you, for whatever reason, felt offended. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we should encourage people to say nasty or unpleasant or even racist or sexist or whatever else things about each other. But having the law protect us from so-called hate speech is not the solution. We need to encourage a return to more civilised standards where self-control and resilience are taken as a sign of good, of strong character. Because ultimately, the notion of hate speech, other than in the most obvious examples such as anti-Semitism 
or the deliberate and malicious use of ancient racist and sexist swear words, well, it can quickly become something hate speech that is in the mind of the beholder, or even worse, is purely fictitious. Since taking over Twitter, Elon Musk has been on a crusade to stop the banning and the censoring of individuals in order on Twitter, the world's most used platform for speaking to each other, to promote freedom of expression and free speech without banning and censoring. The inevitable criticism is that he has been promoting hate speech. This week, the BBC set out to prove that banning certain individuals on Twitter was essential to prevent hate speech. But in doing so, they proved the very opposite. The only thing to fear about hate speech, it turns out, is the term itself. Listen carefully as Elon Musk is quizzed by BBC reporter James Clayton, who claims that because Elon Musk has sacked and got rid of many of the content moderators, these are the censors, the Orwellian censors, that were working at Twitter and doing so much damage, well, this, this lefty reporter claims that the levels of hate speech have risen. But have they really? Watch as Elon Musk brilliantly dismantles this typical fraudulent lefty garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I would, I would only just add that, you know, we have spoken to people who, who have been sacked that used to be in content moderation. And, and, and we've spoken to people very recently who were involved in moderation. And they just say they just, there's not enough people to police this stuff, particularly around, um, particularly around hate speech. Um, in the company. Do, is that well, what hate speech you are you address? talking about? I mean, you use Twitter. Right. Do you see a rise in hate speech? I mean, I, I, but just a personal anecdote. Like, what do, do you? I don't. P personally, my, uh, for you, I would see I get, I get more of that kind of content, yeah, personally. So, so let's just pause it there. Yeah. The interviewer is specifically asserting in a factual BBC interview with Elon Musk that he, the reporter himself, has seen a rise in hate speech since Elon Musk relaxed the censorship rules. Elon Musk is, as we all should be, a little skeptical. Listen as the reporter effortly, effortlessly shifts from his descriptions. You, you see more hate speech personally. I would say I would see more hateful content in that. In that content moment. you don't like or, or hateful? What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, just content that will solicit a, a reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist, those kinds of, those kinds of things. So you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, no, is that I'm, what you're saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm saying... Well, I'm just curious. What you, I'm, just, I'm trying to understand what you mean by hateful con content. And I'm asking for specific examples. Um, and, if, and you just said that if something is slightly sexist, that's hateful content. Does that mean that it should be banned? Well, you've asked me, you've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more. It, I'd say it's got slightly more. OK, we've gone from hate speech, which isn't hate speech, it's now hateful content, whatever that means, to, no, it's not that either, it's something that will solicit a reaction. Oh, no, and it's not even that. It's now something that is slightly sexist. Like what, a, an ad for a bikini on a beach? A, a naughty seaside postcard? Have a listen. Can, right. you, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't need... I, I, honestly, you I don't... You can't name I, a single example. I'll tell you why, because I don't actually use that for you feed anymore, because I, I just don't particularly like it. But you said actually, a lot, of people, a lot of people are quite similar. I, 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 only, well, I only look well, at hang my, on a second. You said you've seen more hateful content, but you can't name a single example, not even one. I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three or four weeks and I well, then how did you see the hateful content content because I've been I've been using I've been using Twitter since you've taken it over for the last six months okay so then you must have at some point seen that you for you hateful content I'm asking for one example right and you I, can't I, give us a single I, one and, and, and I'm saying I, I, then I, I say so that you don't know what you're talking about really yes because you can't give me a single example of hateful con content not even one tweet and yet you claimed that the hateful content was high well that's a false no, what I claimed, you just lied. What, no, no, what I claim was uh, there are many uh, organizations that say that that kind of information is on the rise. 
Have you ever seen such disgraceful dissembling, outrageous obfuscation and cynical misleading of viewers by a journalist? I mean, seriously. Let's go on. Whether it has a mic feed one or example. not. I mean, I, right, and Literally if you look at something one. like the, the uh, Strategic Dialogue uh, Institute in the, in the UK, they will say that. So you, they, Look, it's, people will say all sorts of nonsense. I'm literally asking for a right. single example, and you can't name one. Right, and as, as I've already said, I don't use that feed. But let's, well, then how let, would you know? Then, that I don't you, think this is getting anywhere. You literally said you experienced more hateful content and then couldn't name a single example. Right, and as I said, I, That's haven't, absurd. I, haven't, I haven't actually looked at that feed. I then how would you know this hateful content? Because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. I can't give you an exact example. Let's move on. We, have, we only have a certain amount of time. And there <laughs> you have it, Let's folks. Move on. In a nutshell, that's a textbook example of how the left creates a problem then lies about how prevalent that problem is, then ramps up the fear about the extent and damage that that problem is doing with no genuine data to back up the hysteria, then imposes rules, regulations, censorship, cancelling, laws and so on to control what is actually a largely fictitious problem in the first place. We've seen examples of this during COVID, we see it on climate, we see it on race, we see it on gender and everything else in the lefty playbook. It's the same radical Marxist playbook over and over and over again and well-meaning, good-natured, everyday people keep falling for it. But worse, as Elon Musk points out, the very people calling for censorship of you because you might say something that's slightly sexist are at the same time censoring and deliberately not reporting on very important information that in a free society every individual should have a right to know. This, in my opinion, is modern left-wing fascism. Listen. Does the BBC uh, hold itself at all responsible for misinformation re regarding ma masking and, and side effects of vaccinations and not reporting on that at all? And what about the fact that the BBC was put under pressure by the British government to change its editorial policy? Are you aware of that? This is, a, this is not an interview about the BBC. Oh, so. you thought it wasn't? <laughs> and this, I see now why you've done Twitter Spaces. I am not a representative of the BBC's editorial policy. I want to make that clear. Let's talk about something else. You want I'm to talk about the BBC. You too. All right, let's, 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 talk about, let's talk about something else. You weren't expecting that. <laughs> yes, he was not <laughs> expecting that. And Elon Musk is in a position where he can quiz the media like that. Most of us are not in that position. Yes, well done, Elon Musk, for turning the tables on the Orwellian world of the modern left-wing media who believe in censoring ordinary people because of the risk of hate speech, which turns out to not exist in that instance, and at the same time, do the bidding of governments in denying people potentially life-saving information. Martin Luther King talked about judging people or I guess institutions, by their character. The modern media stands condemned.